Microsoft has a new CEO and the founder has a new job to talk about the changes at Big Mr. Softy. We are lucky to have with us today Rob Enderly, who is an analyst at Enderly Group. Rob, thank you for coming on. Appreciate it. My pleasure. You know, it's uh, kind of early for you out there on the West Coast. Uh, so let's let's start with the change in the top spot, the CEO job. Satya Nadella gets the job. We knew that was going to happen, but what is the significance of having this guy, this insider, this specific man? Well, it means that they're looking for a light touch, not a heavy touch. You hire from the outside if you want to make massive changes to the company, much like uh, Steve Jobs did at Apple. Apple, in that case, was within months of failing, and they needed a catastrophic change to keep it alive and turn it around. In this case, much of Microsoft is actually doing just fine, generating tons of revenue and tons of profit. They don't want to break that, so they take somebody that they know is a, that they know is a known performer and ask him to spread his wings a bit and try to fix the parts of Microsoft that need fixing, but not break the parts that they don't want broken. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good point. The company is, and I say this whenever we talk about Microsoft, because people, you know, they want to beat up on it, and there's some justification for that. But it is a cash cow. They make a lot, a lot of money. But the last decade, a lot of products have failed. A lot haven't gone any. I mean, the Xbox, I think, is a big success. But you look at yeah. everything else they've done, can't say they've had a lot of successes. How much pressure is on him to come up with a, a success? The market is changing dramatically. We know that. How much pressure is there on him to get into the cloud, to get into whatever is, is on the cutting edge? Well, remember, he's the cloud guy, and they've actually done mm -hmm. very well on the cloud. Where they've missed is on devices and, and consumer-facing hardware, for the most part, which was not Steve uh, Ballmer's strength and, uh, and was in Bill Gates' uh, uh, house, if you would, and, and they're actually bringing Gates back to help with the creation of product. I mean, the big mistake that was made last decade was when, when Gates stepped down, he didn't really step down. It wasn't like they fully backfilled him. They brought in Ray Ozzie, who was the guy that created Notes, uh, and um, and asked him to be a, a product guy, and he just, he, one, he wasn't really that guy, and number two, he didn't really get along all that well with Steve Ballmer, so he was absolutely ineffective and so the gap you felt wasn't a, a lack of skills with with Steve Ballmer because he never had those skills it was the fact that they never really backfilled Bill Gates and it does look like Satya at least is going to try to turn Bill Gates into an asset stop him from being a liability to the company and try to fix that product area using Gates and other assets to do it so it looks like he knows what the problem is Let's see if you can fix it. Yeah, let's talk about Bill Gates for a second. This new job, the technology advisor, uh, is this going to be a, a, a job in name only, or is Bill Gates really going to be taking on more of a day-to-day -day role? Well, this gives Satya the ability to either turn Gates on or off. If, if Gates doesn't engage, then he's free to, to backfill him. Whereas chairman of the company, it's pretty hard to step in as a CEO and override the chairman. If, he, if chairman, if he's not, if he's not stepping aside and he's not stepping in, the, the, the gap remains unfilled. In this organizational structure, Satya, Bill Gates effectively works for Satya. So he has the ability to fix the problem if, if Gates is not performing. So so it's a much better organizational structure than they had previously. Yeah. Uh, Steve Ballmer, there were a lot of gripes about him throughout his tenure, but the guy was a very early uh, employee, very close with Bill Gates, really had a very long leash. How long a leash is Satya going to get? Reasonably long. He's, uh, he's under uh, John Thompson, uh, IBM trained, uh, very successful CEO as chairman of, of uh, Microsoft's board. Uh, the guy's an expert at being a, C a CEO and can, can undoubtedly better mentor Satya than Bill Gates mentored uh, Steve Ballmer. I, one of the issues with those two guys being very close friends is I think it created a problem in terms of mentoring. It, it, Ballmer wanted to step in the role. He wanted it to be his company. He'd earned the right. And Bill, his close friend, was there to kind of sort of mentor him. But Bill was off doing his philanthropic duties and really didn't step into mentoring. And it's not really clear he knew how to mentor somebody into the CEO role. Thompson does. So Satya comes in with a much better balance in terms of executive leadership. They help him make that step, make that leap into, into the next job. Hey, uh, Rob, last question. Microsoft, obviously huge on the desktop, huge on PCs. Can they make the leap into the cloud? Well, they are. They, the Azure Office 365 were both hugely successful products. Uh, even the guys on Linux, and Linux was created to kill Microsoft, <laughs> often use uh, Azure. 
uh, Microsoft's cloud platform to do it these days. It's more secure, it's better, it's performing very well financially. In fact, the reason Satya got the job is because he made the cloud so successful. So the cloud isn't really an issue for them, but where they've gotten pounded is on Zoom, it's on tablets, it's on smartphones, it's on the devices that made Apple big, not the, not the technologies that made Microsoft big for the, for the most part. Windows is still a problem and needs to be fixed. But, the, but, the, uh, but at the end of the day, he's, if you like cloud, Satya is your guy. Okay, that's good. Rob Enderley, thank you very much. Pleasure.